Hi everyone, our subject today is neck masses in pediatric. Most neck masses are benign, but it is important not to miss rare malignant masses. A direct history and physical examination allow for successful diagnosis and it necessary referral for further evaluation and treatment. Neck masses may be distinguished broadly into two categories, congenital and acquired. Masses present since birth or with a chronic drainage or recurrent episode of swelling are usually congenital. History of fever may indicate inflammation or infection. Constitutional symptoms such as fever, night sweat, weight loss may indicate malignancy or a granulomatous process. Rapidly enlargement, enlarging painless masses may be malignant. Those due to infection are often painful. Symptoms indicating compression of the trachea, esophagus, or recurrent laryngeal nerve should be elicited because rapid uh, progression of mass may be life-threatening. A history of uh, recurrent infection such as uh, thrush sinopulmonary infection or cellulitis may indicate an immune deficiency syndrome. Now, how to approach to the neck mass in pediatric after performing history and physical examination if it is congenital? Uh, location physical uh, location physical findings. If it is anterior midline or paramedian, consider free T4 TSH thyroid scan, imaging CT ultrasound aspiration. This is maybe thyroglossal duct cyst, dermoid cyst, thymic cyst, goiter, congenital hyperthyroidism, defect in thyroid hormone synthesis, maternal goitro genes, and uh, iodine deficiency, teratoma, or uh, laryngocele. If it is anterior triangle, posterior uh, auricular, post auricular angle of the mandible anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid with or without fistula this is maybe a branchial cleft cyst if it is within the belly of the sternocleidomastoid this is maybe congenital muscular torticollis of any location soft spongy red purplish color transluminate imaging ultrasound ct mri this is maybe cystic hygroma or hemangioma now, if it is acquired, also according to the location physical finding, uh, if it is a lymph node involvement, lymphadenitis or lymphadenopathy, this is will be discussed in another video. If it is enlarging and persistent cervical mass with the, any of the persistent drainage from the nose or ear, which is refractory to therapy, Horner syndrome, iris heterochromia, raccoon eye, periorbital ecchymosis, patient need MRI because the risk of rhabdomyosarcoma or neuroblastoma. If it is in the lateral neck, obscuring angle of the mandible, if it is no, not obscuring the angle of the mandible, this is a branchial cleft cyst. If it is yes, obscuring the angle of the mandible, so it is a salivary gland enlargement. Is there any sign of inflammation present in the salivary gland, warm, tender? If it is yes, it is acute salivary gland infection, either suburative or non-suburative, non-suburative like mumps, Coxsackie, a virus, HIV, or suburative like staph aureus. If it is not inflamed, uh, this is maybe salivary calculus. Uh, collagen vascular disease, recurrent emesis like bulimia, cystic fibrosis, recurrent idiopathic paratactis, mucosal or tumor. If it is midline, move with the swallowing. So this is a thyroid gland. This is goiter. It is hard, solitary, rapidly growing nodule. If it is yes, patient need thyroid scan, ultrasound with or without fine needle aspiration or biopsy. This is maybe benign adenoma or carcinoma. If it is not uh, not hard, not solitary, not uh, rapidly growing, so patient need free T4, TSH, antithyroid antibody with or without thyroid scan, imaging, ultrasound, CT. Result could be 
hypothyroid, hyperthyroid, or eothyroid. If it is hypothyroid, patient may have autoimmune thyroiditis, endemic goiter, iodine deficiency, goitrogenic drug, defect in thyroid hormone synthesis, or thyroglossal duct cyst. If patient hyperthyroid, this is maybe Graves disease or autoimmune thyroiditis. If patient eothyroid, maybe Bender syndrome, simple colloid goiter, autoimmune thyroiditis, or thyroglossal duct cyst. Investigation patient may be needed. We mentioned some of them. Now, if the patient, of course, X-ray, chest X-ray, is first line investigation and helpful in cases of TB or lymphoma. Ultrasound of the neck is useful in any lump. Full blood count, leukocytosis, fever, bacterial infection, atypical lymphocytosis for mononucleosis. Liver function test, abnormal in Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus serology panel test or IgG for Epstein-Barr virus, tuberculin skin test for suspected TB adenitis, serum antibody study for Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, HIV or Bartodendra, uh, cut scratch fever. Needle aspiration for gram stain and culture in suspected malignancy. Top tips. Most common neck mass in uh, pediatric is reactive lymphadenopathy, usually caused by viral infection. The condition is benign, but the lymph node may remain as harmless palpable lump for months or years. Parents usually fear the possibility of cancer. It is important to reassure them. A thyroglossal cyst. Uh, which developed from the remnant thyroglossal duct is painless but became uh, becomes enlarged and tender if infected. Pathognomonic sign is it vertical movement on swallowing and tongue protrusion. So this is important. Uh, these cysts are the second most common neck masses after lymph node. The usual bronchial cyst look like an insignificant papule on the side of the neck of uh, center in contrast to thyroglossal cyst. Uh, tracing out its tract in the surgical removal may be uh, quite difficult. The most common acquired goiter in children is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, presenting with the normal thyroid function or hypothyroidism. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis often present with the generalized lymphadenopathy seen mostly in systemic form, stellus disease, in association with fever, rash, and hepatosplenomegaly. Red flag, be very cautious in undertaking needle aspiration for TB lymphadenitis as there is a real risk of fistula. A thyroglossal cyst should never be excised unless the possibility of the thyroid tissue is excluded. Thyroid nodules are uncommon in children compared to adults but are often malignant in up to 25%. Thank you for your listening.